Now since A is a subset or is equal to B and B is a subset of or is equal to C implies that A is a subset of or is a equal to C, uh, we usually write this in one statement that we call a chain. A is a subset of or is equal to B, which is a subset of or is equal to C. Now, in a given chain, a given set is a subset or is possibly equal to any set that follows it. So, for example, the set A is a subset of or is equal to B, and the set A is a subset of or is equal to C. Now, from this point forward, I will use the symbol or the notation for subset equality as the general notation for a subset where I want to allow for the possibility that the two sets or that two sets are equal. So new definition. Let A and B be sets. The union of A and B which is denoted A union B is the set that contains those elements which are either in the set A or in the set B or both. That is, the union of A and B is the set of all those elements X for which X is in the set A or X is in the set B. So as an exercise for any arbitrary sets, A sub 1 and A sub 2 prove that A sub 1 is a subset of the union of A sub 1 with A sub 2. That is, show that a given set is a subset of any union which contains it. So new definition. Once again, let the sets A, or rather let A and B be sets. The intersection of the sets A and B, which is denoted A intersect B is the set that contains those elements which are simultaneously in both the sets A and B that is The intersection of A and B is the set containing the elements X for which X is in the set A and X is in the set B. So the intersection of two sets contains those elements that are common to the two sets. So as an exercise for any arbitrary sets, A sub 1 and A sub 2 prove that the intersection of A sub 1 with A sub 2 is a subset of A sub 1. That is, prove that the intersection is a subset of any of the sets in the intersection.
So new definition. Non-empty sets are called disjoint if their intersection is the empty set. So two sets are disjoint if they have no elements in common. Okay, new definition. Once again, let A and B be sets. The Cartesian product of the sets A and B is the set which we denote A cross B and this is the set of ordered pairs where the first coordinate and the ordered pair comes from the set on the left of the cross and the second coordinate in the ordered pair comes from the set on the right of the cross. So notice that order does matter in particular, notice that if the set A is not equal to the set B, then the Cartesian product A cross B is not equal to the Cartesian product B cross A. new definition. Once again, let A and B be sets. A relation between the sets A and B is any subset which we will call R of the Cartesian product of A and B. So notice that if this subset R is not empty, then the subset R contains ordered pairs Now, if a given ordered pair is in the relation, this is also denoted A is related to B. And if a given ordered pair is not in the relation, this is also denoted a is not related to B. So uh, to define a relation, we give a rule which lets us determine how or if two given elements are related. So let's look at an example. we can define a relation R between the set of integers modulo 2 and the singleton set a singleton set is a set which contains exactly one element, and in this uh, example we'll look at the singleton set containing the number 2. So we can define a relation R between the set of integers modulo 2 and the singleton set containing the uh, number 2 by stating that a given element A is related to B 
if and only if the absolute value of the difference of a and b is equal to 1. So let's look at the Cartesian product of the set of integers modulo 2 with the singleton containing the number 2. This is the set of ordered pairs. The ordered pairs 0, 2, and 1, 2. Now the number 0 is not related to the number 2 since the absolute value of the difference of 0 and 2 is 2, which is not equal to 1. The number 1 is related to the number 2 since the absolute value of the difference of 1 and 2 is 1, which is the rule that we have used to define the relation. And so the relation R is the singleton set containing the ordered pair 1, 2, and this is a subset of the Cartesian product of the set of integers modulo 2 with the singleton set containing the number 2. Now notice that in this example the number 1 is related to the number 2, but order does matter. The number 2 is not related to the number 1 since the ordered pair 2, 1 is not in the Cartesian product of the set of integers modulo 2 with the singleton set containing 2, and so there are no subsets of this Cartesian product which contains the ordered pair 2, 1. Okay, so new definition. Once again, let A and B be sets. A function between the sets A and B is a non-empty relation which we will call phi, which is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross B, which satisfies the following property. If the ordered pair AB is in the relation phi, and the ordered pair AC is in the relation phi, then necessarily B is equal to C. That is, for a function between two sets, every ordered pair that has the same first element or a first coordinate must also have the same second coordinate. Remember that in a set we can list the elements more than once. So uh, another name for a function is a map or mapping And this uh, terminology allows us to see more clearly what we mean by a function. So suppose that the set A contains three elements, A sub 1 through A sub 3. And the set B contains three elements, B sub 1 through B sub 3. For a function between the sets A and B, an element in the set A can be mapped to only one element in the set B. So this map diagram is an example of a function. This is a function between A and B, and we can call this function phi. And this function phi contains the ordered pairs A1, B1, 
and A2, B1. So notice that in terms of ordered pairs, it is true that this is a uh, non-empty subset of the Cartesian product of A and B, for which a given uh, element as the first coordinate has a unique element as its second coordinate. Now, if instead we have the situation where we have the same uh, two sets, and a given element is paired with two separate elements in the second set, then this is a non-empty relation but it is not a function since this relation contains the ordered pairs a1, b1 and a1, b2 and this is a non-empty relation that does not satisfy the condition that uh, a given first coordinate has a unique second coordinate in the ordered pair. So new definition. Let phi be a function between the sets A and B the domain of the function is the set which we denote DOM of phi and this is the set of all those elements A in the first set for which there exists an element in the second set such that the ordered pair AB is in the function. This symbol, the uh, backwards letter epsilon, is read such that. Now the range of the function is the set. Which, which is denoted R in G of phi, and this is the set of all those elements B in the second set, for which there exists an element A in the first set, such that the ordered pair AB is in the function. So let's look at an example From the uh, map diagram of the function that we looked at previously, we have that the function phi contains the ordered pairs a1, b1, and a2, b1. The domain of the function is the set containing elements from the first set for which there exists an element in the second set such that the ordered pair is in the function. So the domain of the function is the set containing the first coordinate in the ordered pairs that are in the function. And so this uh, is the set containing the elements a sub 1 and a sub 2. The range of the function is the set containing the elements that are in the second set for which there exists an element in the first set such that the ordered pair is in the function. And so uh, in terms of ordered pairs we're looking at the set of all the second coordinates in the ordered pairs and in this case there is only one such element and that is b sub 1. 